Welcome back everybody out there, all of you flashlight junkies. Today we're going to be going over this light that you see in my hands right now. This is the Surefire G2X with Max Vision. So um, there's a few things that are different. Um, this year Surefire has updated their G2X line. Uh, they have the G2X Tactical, G2X Pro, and then the G2X with the Max Vision. I will be reviewing the Tactical down the road as well, so stay tuned for that guys. But the difference between those and this is a couple things. Those ones are going to have a max output I believe of 600 lumens. This one's going to have a max output of 800 lumens. However, the big difference is the Max Vision head that we have on here. This one's designed to give you maximum situational awareness in the environment that you're in um, versus those that are designed for some other things, uh, whether it be controlling subjects if you're a police officer or throwing, throwing light and getting positive identification further downrange. So sort of pros and cons depending on what your use is. But this one here, in my opinion, is designed for an everyday type of carry role. So what we're going to do next is check out that max vision output see how it compares to another type of surefire light out there in the dark and then we'll come back in take a look at the features of the light and let you know what we think of it overall for those of you new to the channel that fence right there the corner of the wood where it meets up with the iron portion is about 35 40 feet away those trees depending on the tree are about 50 feet away um, so this is the pattern that you guys can see from the g2x on high with that max vision beam pattern you can see it's nice and wide all the way out if you guys hear some dogs in the trees next to me <laughs> just don't worry about that they're over there sniffing away um, so that was on high and then here it is on low might be a little bit hard for the camera to pick up but i tried to make the settings as close to what i see in real life as possible so you can still illuminate that fence a little bit out there in those trees um, but nothing like when you tap it onto high as you guys can see here now for contrast here is the uh, 6px tactical i believe uh, 6px defender rather this is the old 320 lumen version and you guys can kind of see how that is it's got a little bit more of a hot spot in the middle and then the spill out there on the end whereas with the max vision 800 lumen model here the illuminated area in terms of the focal point is much much wider and you guys can see the edge there it is defined as well but again this is the old pattern a little bit of a hot spot and then the edge you guys can see a black dog will be illuminated just fine by either of them. Now that you guys have seen the beam, let's get into the light itself. The body, which is basically the piece that you see right here, is made out of a substance Surefire calls Nitron. I would assume it's a Zytel infused polymer, like a Glock frame or a Smith & Wesson MP frame or something like that. Um, we're going to back the tail cap out here, and you guys will see a few things about it. Number one, it is O-ring sealed, as you would expect. It has good lubrication on it from the factory on those threads. Uh, that's going to help give it the uh, water resistance um, that it does have, so you guys could submerge this should you choose to do so it will work out just fine but you guys can see everything's pretty clean on the inside there it takes two cr123 batteries and does not take 18650s which i'm sure some of you guys will be asking now that surefire is uh, using some or rather has released some dual fuel models that this is not one of them uh, the tail caps pretty intuitive as you guys saw there of course the first mode is going to be that low mode that you guys see there 15 lumens and that's going to get you 52 hours of runtime and the tail cap can be actuated uh, momentary by just pressing and holding and then if you want constant on press and hold and again we're still in that 15 lumen output mode if you want to get to the high output you're going to have to hit it twice like so and then you can again click down if you want constant on or you can just hold for momentary on and with the 800 lumen output there it's going to give you 1.5 hours of runtime there with those two cr123 batteries um, the body itself has a one inch diameter I think it's actually just over one inch due to the ridges on there but if you wanted to weapon mount this uh, you certainly could do so with most of your common one inch mounts out there the bezel diameter there is 1.1 inches and that as we'll get into here in a second when we do some comparisons is nice uh, it's much smaller and slimmer than a lot of other lights in this category the head, unlike the body, is made out of aluminum. It does have a mil-spec Type 3 hard anodized finish on there. You guys can see it looks a little bit different there uh, because when it got hit versus the polymer, it kind of nicks it up a little bit differently. And that's, again, just due to the aluminum material that it is made out of. And when you actually look 
at the Max Vision head there, you'll see it looks very different than the TIR uh, type of lenses that Streamlight has put out over the years. This one here is designed to give you, as they say it, a wall of light. And uh, as you guys saw earlier, it definitely does that. It still has a little bit of a hot spot and a little bit of throw to it, but it's definitely designed to give you a wall of light throughout a wide area and sort of spread those 800 or 15 lumens around. The G2X lights with the Max Vision head are relatively new, so I want to do a quick size comparison in case some of you guys haven't seen them yet. This one here is sort of the next evolution in this line here. This is the 6PX Defender that we showed you outside. Most of these were going to be 320 lumen output, and you guys can see the size difference, sort of how they got it down a little bit. The body and the tail cap are pretty much exactly the same. However, the head of the light is narrower and shorter, and again, that's due to the Max Vision head that they have on there. Now, one big thing that's different about this that I can't really translate uh, through the camera is just how light this is. This one here weighs in on my scale at 3.91 ounces. So uh, compared to these other lights that we're gonna go over here in just a second, it is very, very light, which is nice, of course, if you're going to be carrying it, and that weight does include the batteries. So again, this one here is sort of the update on this series that you guys are probably used to from Surefire. Uh, just to give you some size comparisons, here is the EDC2T uh, that we reviewed a probably a month or two months ago as you guys are watching this video. And you can see the body, of course, on this one's much slimmer. It is aluminum as well. And then the head is pretty much the same size. It's a little bit narrower than this portion of the head right here, but in terms of at the end of the bezel, pretty much the same size. Now, uh, one that I think some folks are gonna be looking at here is a competitive option from Streamlight. This is their uh, Polytac X. And it's going to be a 600 lumen output, but again, it's got that sort of polymer body on there. Uh, this one also has more polymer in the head than the Surefire does, but that's just sort of how they stack up size-wise. When you look at the two of them side by side, the stream white there is going to have a bigger head on there, and it's going to have more of throw because that's how it's designed versus the sort of, again, wall of light that the Max Vision here is designed to deliver. We've covered most of the important points of the light with one exception, of course, is gonna be cost. With Surefire, that's always a concern for a lot of folks because they definitely make very high quality lights as you guys have probably uh, seen throughout this video and past videos of mine, but they're definitely not the cheapest. This one here though is one of their more inexpensive lights. I think the MSRP on it is gonna be $109. If you look around online, you can find it for a little bit less than that. We will throw links down below so you guys can pick one up if you guys want to. Um, so my thoughts on the light overall. So number one, I really like how it's lightweight, uh, considering the size that it does have and the output that it does have. So throwing it in your pocket really wouldn't be a big deal. And I know a lot of folks don't like clips. So if you don't like clips and you want an EDC type of light that has the output that we have here, this is one I would take a look at. In my opinion, it's designed for someone who's going to have a serious job where they need a light, but maybe not a serious tactile job. And the reason I say that is that the first output, regardless of how you uh, engage it, of course, is going to be the 15 lumens. So if your professional was, let's say, I don't know, law enforcement, my personal preference to that would be to have a high then low, but I think a lot of people out there, let's say you're like an oil rig inspector um, and you need to see down into dark places, just momentarily getting that 15 lumen for the tasks that don't require that you know huge wall of 800 lumens of light um, is not a big deal at all. You're just gonna bump it twice and that way you'll get the output when you need it. So that's sort of how I look at it uh, because that guy on that oil rig needs his light to work. So if you need your light to work, um, again, Surefire, very proven durability. The CR123s, they're not just gonna like run dead on you like some of the uh, like 18650 rechargeables can. So for a serious use, EDC type of light that doesn't have a primary role as a tactical light, that's kind of where I see this. Again, that's my personal opinion. If you guys have a different opinion, by all means, post down below in the comments. I'd love to hear it. But I think that's pretty much it. If you guys have any questions about the light that we didn't answer here today, you can always post those down below in the comment section. As always, you can post over at my Facebook page. That's generally speaking the best way to get in touch with me. But thanks for watching, guys. Thanks for subscribing. If you're not subscribed yet, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And I hope to see all of you in the next video.